Ah, Crunchyroll. By this time you must have seen a lot of YouTubers making the video on the subject matter that I'm about to discuss but since I've been titled to have an opinion, I thought I might jump on the bandwagon and make my opinions known to the world. As always, if you agree with me, what I have to say, give it a thumbs up and if you don't, please do let me know in the comment box below why you disagree. I'm only human and I could be wrong. So with that out of the way, say hello to my intro video which I keep forgetting to use. So for those who do not know, Crunchyroll is an online streaming service like Netflix and Amazon Prime which focuses on animes. The streaming service itself is not as robust as Netflix which is hands down the best I have used when it comes to an online streaming service and I have heard that Crunchyroll's servers often crash when subscribers try to view new, like newer episodes that go live a day after it has aired in Japan. Now I'm not a Crunchyroll subscriber. I tried the free trial, got bored, cancelled my subscription so I won't be charged when the trial ran out, uninstalled it from my PS4 and went back to see whatever I wanted to see on Netflix. It's not that I hate animes, it's just that I found the library to be underwhelming. But that was a long time ago and at that time I was a bit disappointed with what they had to offer. I, I don't know, but something just didn't resonate with me. But I do know is that I won't be subscribing to the service anymore. Now before you label me as an SJW, let me assure you I'm not. Social justice warriors ask for ask for ban of things and services they don't like and penalize others for disagreeing with them. People like myself on the other hand have no problem with a particular service or a product, just their shitty business practices and their obvious virtue signaling. I have a problem with companies that try to push a certain narrative that I disagree with and most of all companies telling me what I want and giving me something that they think is right for me without even asking me if I am happy with their approach. After all, I am a consumer that they should be aiming their products towards, you know, they should be aiming their products towards me. And this is why I am making a video on Crunchyroll about what I thought of High Guardian Spice announcement a series exclusive to the anime streaming service. They put out a video on their YouTube channel and boy it was a train wreck. I mean seriously, the video got panned big time. How big you might ask? Well they not only disabled the comments but also hit the likes to dislike ratio. When you see these two disabled on a video you can tell that there is someone out there who doesn't want you to know the kind of ass whooping that video is getting. And trust me when I say this, this video is getting a lot. It's like Crunchyroll went to a restaurant or something like what's in the menu? Uh, ass whooping, that's the only thing we are doing and guess what, it's all you can eat, you're getting it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. But before we get into the drama that took place after the video came out, let's take a look at the video itself, shall we? This show has a lot of heart that I don't think would have come through from any other studio. Why? Why do you think this show has a lot of heart that couldn't have come from any other studio? What makes your studio so amazing? Or better yet, do you think all those studios out there that work tirelessly on a project to create a storyline rich with relatable characters in a universe that is larger than life, you think they are incompetent? You think they are not as good as you or you think they are good but you're better than them? Frankly speaking, that is not your call to make. If anyone has to call it in, it should be, you know, the Crunchyroll subscribers the anime fans who will see the anime. They are the ones who will decide if this show does have a heart that couldn't have come from any other studio. This is not for you to decide. Your claim is utter nonsense and you're an idiot for even saying such a thing. I mean, have you seen any Studio Ghibli movies like Princess Mononoke and Spirited Away? Yeah, I know they weren't exactly a TV show but the art style, the storyline, the characters, Everything about the movies that came from that studio is top notch. I once heard these lines in a Bollywood movie which I'm going to share with you right now, okay? 
it's okay to be confident, but overconfidence is bad. I can do it, that's confidence. Only I can do it, that's overconfidence. And I don't need to remind you, but confidence is appreciated, overconfidence is frowned upon. One of the things that really attracted me to the position was the opportunity to do traditional hand-drawn 2D animation. Not only do I get to go back to the art form that I truly love, but I also get to create a studio from scratch. So let me get this straight. This is a new studio, and this is the first project of your new studio. Wow. You lot are seriously overconfident with the project you're working on. Although credit is due where it's due, 2D hand-drawn animation is something you don't see a lot a lot these days. Maybe because it's time consuming because, you know, you need to draw the frames and sprites and all. And the end result is visually aesthetic, well, most of the time. If you haven't seen animes like Akira and Princess Mononoke, see those and you will get the idea of how crisp and stunning hand-drawn 2D can look. But I sincerely doubt this show will be as good as those two. High Guardian Spice is about four girls who live in a magical city and are going to school to become guardians. I'm sorry, what? High Guardian Spice is about four girls who live in a magical city and are going to school to become guardians. So, basically, just like every other absurdly popular anime out there, for example, Fairy Tale had a similar plotline. The first few episodes were set from Lucy's perspective, who's, who was looking for Fairy Tale magical guild in a land where magic and wizards are common. And when she does, she is introduced to the guild where she learns the ropes of how the guild operates. Or maybe Attack on Titans, where Armin, Mikasa, and Aaron join the forces and train to take on the flesh eating titans. Or even better, Little Witch Academia. Kakigurui, uh, man, I can never pronounce that, pronounce that, that name. Uh, but, but you get the idea. And probably many more. You go to a school to train for whatever and the story expands from there. There is nothing original about the concept. True, the story develops in animes as episodes go on, but on the surface right now, it looks like any other anime out there. It's... Funny. It was funny to see those oversized glasses on your face. And no, I did not make fun of her physical appearance, I made fun of her glasses. I mean seriously, whoever was in charge of making this video had the bright idea to let Amalia wear those glasses. It's like the whole video was nothing more than a setup to make everyone associated with this project look bad. It's either that or this is a troll video. I I'm My money's on troll video. I think whoever was making this video had the idea like, oh, you know what, let's just troll the internet today. It's funny and it's warm and it's adventurous and they're letting us make it a little bit weird, so that's very exciting. I honestly don't know what to feel about this part here. On one end, it's good that a studio is given creative freedom to approach a project as they see fit. You know, experiment with it. But on the other hand, I'm a bit worried for reasons you will see in a bit, that such creative freedom could be detrimental to the project in general. But as far as being warm and funny goes, you could try and inject such feelings in a project but it doesn't really matter how you approach a project, what matters is how I as a viewer feel when I see your anime. When I see the storyline unfold in front of my eyes, when I see the characters being introduced, how they develop over time in the storyline, how they change, how they gel together. But I as a viewer am struggling to connect with your project because you haven't really told me much about your anime. And what I have been told is nothing original. On top of that, your character design look very western. They don't look anime to me which defeats the purpose of your project's existence because Crunchyroll is an anime streaming service. So please forgive us when people like myself react like this to your anime or whatever the hell you're trying to make here. What? What the fuck? There's an authenticity to it and a sincerity that's uh, just heartwarming.
<laughs> Authenticity. According to Google of undisputed origin and not a copy. Genuine. And yet they have not told us anything about the anime that makes it original. Even the art style is not true to the anime art style. Oh my goodness, this is gonna bomb so bad. The moment it's gonna come out, and I can see it happening, left-leaning media is going to give it, say, average to high score, while completely ignoring the genuine or authentic criticism from the fans. Something that they're doing right now. Link will be in the description box below. And when the numbers are going to come in, the studio executives at the studio the studio executives are going to blame the misogynist on the net for the failure of High Guardian Spice. I mean, it it has happened before, and I can see it happening again. It's a very modern reflection of the world. Our characters are really diverse. Our cast is really diverse. Yay! Because that's what animes need: diversity of the cast. Because that worked well in the past. And before anyone says Ocean's 8 was a hit, let me tell you something, Sugar. The movie underperformed by Ocean standard. It was the lowest grossing movie in the series, with, o with Ocean's 11 still being the highest grossing movie. And that's without adjusting for inflation. So you can kiss my ass on that. And no, that was not an invitation. It was a figure of speech. So yeah, don't, don't get any bright ideas. Don't bust that nut yet. We'll be right back. It's a very modern reflection of the world. Our characters are really diverse. Our cast is really diverse. And that's one of the things that excited me the most about it. Why am I surprised to hear about diverse characters in an anime from a woman who looks like this? I mean, I shouldn't be surprised, but I am. Maybe because it's everything animes are not famous for. Okay, let me make this even more clearer. When I saw Death Note, Nope, not the Netflix abomination, but the anime which was superb. I never thought about diversity. I didn't sit there thinking about inclusiveness or diversity. It never crossed my mind. The storyline and the characters were so well defined that they hooked me completely. I didn't feel excluded from the experience because there were no brown people in the anime. And that is how animes work. And to be honest, that is what appeals to, to the Western audiences. They have their own unique charm, from fandoms to drama to whatever. Every anime has a distinct look that could only come from Japan. And animes are popular. They are, they are even more popular now than ever. And people from all walks of life and skin color and gender identity and sexual orientation watch animes. Yes, yeah, some people don't like animes and prefer not to watch them and some bitch and moan about animes for materials that they cannot handle, but those who do watch animes love them. They don't care about diversity. Unless you're a social justice warrior or a feminist who looks like this. If anything, animes are a big win for Japan because people know, people, people know more about Japan now. The country's art style, history, and the country in general because of animes and Japanese video games. And this is why animes don't really need the forced diversity because animes are an act of diversity and inclusion in themselves. There are people in the West who watch shows like Sons of Anarchy, Game of Thrones, and other live action series that are rooted in Western culture. And they also watch animes that stem from a completely different culture and love those love, love those anime shows to bits. To my understanding, that's a very good thing. So why the hell are you trying to contaminate animes with stupid and bullshit western ideology of character diversity and inclusiveness? I'm not against diversity, but I don't see why you had to highlight it in your announcement trailer. Remember I said earlier that giving complete creative freedom to studios could be a bad thing, I meant stuff like this. Animes don't need such identity politics. If you had said in your trailer that you're trying to make characters that are relatable and I, as a viewer, will fall in love with them, you know, when I see them change the storyline and stuff, it still would have been a bold claim, but I would have chalked it as confidence, or maybe overconfidence. But this right here, what you just said now, is completely rubbish. 
It wouldn't have made any difference if there was a black or brown character in animes like Death Note, Attack on Titans or any other famous anime because the storyline and the characters are so captivating that you don't pay attention to, to such things. And yes, I do think it's forced diversity because if the characters were organic or natural, then you would have never mentioned the diversity part. The non-white characters would have been just another character with a different skin tone. The fact that you mentioned diversity goes on to show that it is something that you're aiming for from the ground up. That means any non-white character that I'm going to see now in your anime or whatever the hell you're trying to make here is not black or brown because it's just another character but because you made that character non-white because diversity slash representation matters? And even if that would have not been your intention to begin with, but that's the vibe I'm getting right now when you said that. It means that you, you created that black or brown character just for the sake of diversity. Oh my, oh my, oh, you know what? I, I think I've rambled a bit, you know, I, I think I've rambled on for a bit more than I was supposed to. I think it's time for me to move on. It's a very modern reflection of the world. Our characters are really diverse. Our cast is really diverse. And that's one of the things that excited me the most about it. Wow. Bringing a diverse cast excited you the most. I mean, you could have been excited about the story that you're trying to tell. You could have been excited about the universe that you're trying to create and how it could open up to the opportunity, you know, to possibly explore it later with a second season or a spin-off. But no, the diversity excited you the most. People are really... As if you weren't sick and tired of seeing buzz cut, rainbow hair, tattooed feminists running on the streets. Now you have to see them in the animes too. Get the fuck out of here, man. People are really excited about what the show is and what it represents. You know what? I'm now excited to see how bad this shit is gonna bomb. The fact that Crunchyroll Originals is doing this as a 2D animated series is giving us an opportunity to do things artistically that a lot of other shows and other studios really have forgotten how to do. Wow. That's insulting. And no, they haven't forgotten how to do 2D animation. They can if they want to, but A, it's very time consuming, and B, it can be very expensive and not a lot of anime studios don't have the money and resources that you lot do. You cuckold! We are 50% female in all the creative roles and our writer's room is 100% female. I mean, this is what my whole career has been about, is trying to get those voices in there that are not being heard. What the actual fuck did you just say? We are 50% female in all the creative roles and our writer's room is 100% female. No, 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 I, I, I don't, I don't want to hear it again. I heard it the first time. Right, so your creative, oh man, uh, hold on a second, let me get my, let me get my bearings right. Your creative team is 50% male and your writing team is 100% female. Why are you telling me this? As a viewer, I didn't need to hear this. I didn't want to hear this because for me, it doesn't really matter. It could have been written by genderless aliens for all I care. As long as the anime is fun to watch, it doesn't matter. But since you brought that up in your trailer, let's address that, shall we? Your creative team is 50% male and 50% female. This is gender go this is oh, this is gender quota at its finest and here's why I'm against it. It means that employers are more concerned with meeting their quotas rather than bringing on actual experienced talent that would help them accomplish their goals. For example, a man applies for a creative role but is turned down because the employer has hit their gender quota. Same goes for women. Imagine being turned down for a job not because you don't have the you don't have enough experience or don't have the skill but because the employer has had a quota and ha that has been taken up. Oh, I'm, I'm so fuming. I can't even speak now. Oh my. Oh. Okay. Okay. Now. Now I'm pissed. 
best. Up there! That also means that sometimes men and women are given positions in workplaces even when they are not experienced enough, just because of their gender quota. I'm a person of color, okay? Wow. I think he's cute. I love him. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> I never try to hide the fact, so trust me when I say this. I would be pretty pissed off if I'm given a position because of my skin color or my gender because the employer wanted to hit a specific diversity or gender quota. It would have been like the employer is not interested in what I can offer when it comes to my experience and my knowledge about the industry. They are just interested in filling in that quota. It also means that they are not really interested in training me and my future promotion in the company could be dependent on quotas too, rather than you know merit and performance, which could hamper my progress depending on which quota that needs to be met. Now I'm not saying that may have happened at Elation Studios, but the way the message was conveyed in the trailer, I'm having a feeling that some people may have been given positions when they did not deserve it, and some people may have been turned away when they did deserve to work there. You could have sold this to me better by saying that you brought on some of the best creative talents in the industry on board to bring this project to life, but I, I, I don't know man, whoever came up with this trailer needs to be fired because this is one train wreck after another. And then there is this. We are 50% female in all the creative roles and our writer's room is 100% female. Okay, I can chalk the 50-50 gender quota down as equality, but why was this equality not realized in the writing department? Why are there no men in the writing staff? This doesn't look like equality to me. It looks This looks like supremacy. And because you have these feminists working in the writing team, you can pretty much tell that there will be no strong male character. And if there will be one, he would, he would be a side character because female empowerment apparently. Which pretty much explains this. High Guardian Spice is about four girls who, four girls who, four girls who, four girls who. Yay for female empowerment. Go fuck yourselves. We are 50% female in all the creative roles and our writer's room is 100% female. I mean, this is what my whole career has been about, is trying to get those voices in there that are not being heard. So this is what your career is all about, you know, not about trying to tell stories or introduce characters, it's about you getting women into offices because you think they are not being heard. That means all the women working as writers on this project got their positions because they were women? And men were kept away from the writer's position intentionally? Do you know what this is called? It's called sexism. I don't think anyone has seen stories quite like the ones that we're going to tell. I don't know about the stories you will try to tell in High Guardian Spice, but fans will have some amazing stories to tell about how the anime bombed when it came out and how it never got a second season. Okay, maybe Crunchyroll will order a second season to save face, but it will defo bomb. It will. And how do I know this? Well, people are trashing it online to the point where moderators had to close High Guardian Spices forms and comicbook.com launched, launched fake news that anime fans are excited about High Guardian Spice. I can't speak now, I'm so freaking pissed off at this. But yeah, comicbook.com launched like fake news that anime fans are excited about High Guardian Spice when they're clearly not. Because if they did, Crunchyroll wouldn't have disabled the like and dislike ratio in the comment section. Well, this video went on longer than I thought it would, but I wanted to touch upon everything that I wanted to, you know, in greater detail. Because some of the points in there were so stupid, I had to address them. And I'm sorry this video came out a bit late. I did like 50 hours at, at my full-time job last week. I'm still tired. Uh, I'm feeling a bit hungry as well, huh? Anywho, uh, guys, um, I'm gonna peace out now. Have a good day. And uh, yeah, just remember, when you go woke, you'll go broke. See ya.